Hello everyone, my name is Divna. Welcome to today's ecology class where we're gonna talk about ecological factors and ecological range. For the beginning we're gonna do a quick recapitulation of what we learned so far. So in previous presentations we were talking about all these levels of organization of different species but uh, they are independent on species in the matter of ecology, how it functions. So we have organism, population, community, ecosystem, B, and a biosphere dependent on the, um, the complexity of organism. Here you have a picture of an uh, environment, or any environment, this is a nice scenic picture, but here you have everything you need to recapitulate what you talked so far. So you have biotic and abiotic factors that we already talked about a few times. So you have trees, you have mountains, flora growing on it, fauna living within it, you have water or well, everything that fits in the aquatic environment and so far. So this says that the environment is the sum of total of all external factors and that all of them can influence organism, whether they are organic or non-organic. So ecological factors, as I mentioned before, can be divided by their nature. So there are living or non-living, so biotic or abiotic, biotic or living, um, they, they modify how the organism will live in a certain environment and they are coming from the interaction between living creatures, so uh, independently on the environment they, they live in. Down under bullets you'll see names of different interactions that are happening between the species or within the species, but we are going to talk about it in a one special presentation devoted to biotic factors. Today we are mostly going to talk about abiotic factor. So those are factors that are not uh, living by its nature. It's the matter of physical or chemical properties of the environment that the, the, the animal or, or any other living creature is living in, they are basically excluding factors. So as I said, the biotic are modify how the, the organism will live somewhere. A biotic will determine whether an, or, an organism will a, be able to survive in a certain area. So as I said, they can be divided in physical and chemical. And uh, they can also be considered as factors or resources because because factors are uh, unlimited and resources are something that is limiting like water for example in the area certain area the water is limited so it's considered as a resource not as a factor it's more detailed division it's more important to understand that what biotic about abiotic factors actually are so as the whole idea of this ecology class going through each slide we talk here as well we'll mention that everything is connected into nature so you cannot just look at the one single factor and talk only about it whether it's a biotic or abiotic it's as always all connected and there is a wider picture around it just to mention here to be quick that factors can be direct and direct positive and negative an example of a direct isolated influence would be that for poikilo terms, so organisms without the, the ability to to control their body temperature, uh, independent from the surrounding temperature. So, poikilo terms are more active when it's when it's more sunny and warm. For example, lizards, you know, they are more active if the weather is better. So that's the direct contact: weather, temperature versus activity, versus activity. Uh, indirect would be um, the number of plant eating animals will grow if there are more plants and there will be more plants dependent on the climate or a specific nutrient in the ground so that's the nice example of, of all the connectivity we talked about and then if you have more plant eating animals like rabbits there will be more probably uh, foxes eating rabbits so it's really all connected and you cannot you can just look at the specific part of that chain of connectivity just for some reason but you have to be always aware that, that it is influenced by many other things around it but one really important term so it's ecological balance 
An ecological balance is determined as um, ability of an organism to live under certain conditions. The ones we mentioned before, so direct or non-direct, positive or negative, influences of their surrounding, whether if it's biotic or abiotic factor. So how much a species can put up with some uh, properties of its surrounding. Depending on their tolerance, it, you know, species can thrive or they can only survive or they can barely survive and then die. But depending on it, two main groups, so stenovalent and eurivalent, which means stenovalent are the ones with really narrow tolerance level, while eurivalent are species that are comfortable in the wider, wider range of, of, of uh, property uh, changes. So just to quickly understand it, I'll mention that, well, for example, Stanovalet would be species that could live only in the temperate weather, or let's say um, f uh, rainforest species that are only uh, comfortable living in, uh, in that type of temperature and, let's say, um, moist, while eurivalent would be some species that are able to live anywhere in the world because they are putting up with the wide range of, of temperature change. But we're more about it later. This is what we talked about still in this general level. So this uh, it's called Shefford's law. Shefford's law uh, is describing this uh, balance of of ecological tolerance. What if you look? It's actually pretty nicely done. The scheme. What it here says is that I'll show with the with the mouse. So here is the optimum of, of a species uh, survival so it's they have optimum optimum uh, conditions to be on their best fit fitness so uh, they're reproducing well feeding well the youngs young ones are growing well and so and so on uh, so then if you go right or left from the optimum you'll get the critical points which you which you have critical minimum and a critical maximum it's all dependent on the factors of the environment if you have too little of some necessity to survive in your environment it will be a critical minimum or maybe too much of it it will be a critical maximum which you cannot would be not able to survive so here it says preferable range in this area of optimum then you have critical limits which means that Basically, species can survive, but it doesn't really like it there, and it's really trying just to survive, waiting for their next optimum. And then you have these lethal limits, which means that above these these uh, points, the species is not able to survive anymore. So out of these areas, species does not exist anymore. So this would be the um, intensity of ecological factors, this side, the Y would be efficiency of physiological processes. You can also find the, the same graph uh, concerning fitness of, of a population, so growth of population, population density and so on. Just to be sure you understood, you have different uh, surrounding factors. So abiotic or biotic. For example, mice are tolerating the level of eagles in their surrounding. They are coping with that specific level of, of their predators, they're surviving, their fitness is nice, they're reproducing uh, fast enough so they can cope with the, the challenge they have and they're in the optimum. Uh, but if there's a, if the chain, the number of eagles change, so if they grow, in pop, their population grow, the mice population will start dropping till the moment there is no more, more mice available in that terrain. This is an example for um, biotic factors. On the other hand, you have abiotic factor, it will be chemical or physical property. So we, let's say if, you, if a plant needs zinc in the ground, they have enough of zinc uh, available for their growth 
and they are adopting it, they are uh, the plants, the population of the certain species and the air is growing, we're producing well, everything goes fine. So it's an optimum, the physiological processes are an optimum. Uh, but then for at some point, maybe the population will go too much. They're gonna need more zinc because there's more plants, but then there's n not enough zinc for everybody. And then the level of, of the concentration of zinc will start dropping. You're gonna use all of it in the ground and then the the population will start dropping there will be critical maximum while plants are still able to survive but they are basically not thriving and not not developing good enough while waiting for for more zinc to come and if it doesn't happen then the the population will just be wiped out of the area and they will above the lethal zone there will be no more no more space for that species. Dependent on the, the wideness of the this valence, ecological valence, you have oligomeso and poly valent uh, species, uh, both in Eori or Steno, we mentioned before. So Steno is something with a low range of, of, of tolerance and Eori valent would be some species with a wide range of tolerance for different factors. So we have oligostenovalent, for example. Those are species um, with a um, low uh, tolerance for a specific factor. So maybe they, will, they are tolerant, well, widely tolerant for many different factors, but for example, for water, they're strictly, strictly dependent on and they can only live in like big availability of water. Then you have then you have meso which would be for few and poly for many different factors and then you add to it uh, steno or eori so meso stenovalent or meso polyvalent uh, meso eorivalent and you will get the, those uh, mixture of words explaining the, the tolerance of a species. And then and limits are specialists and generalists, which means that specialists are strictly stenovalent, poly stenovalent. For many factors, they are really strict about the levels of concentrations. The uh, flagellites, dependent on uh, corals, they live only in the specific species of corals. But then you have generalist which would be species uh, you can find everywhere in the world mostly so they would they would be poly eurivalent which means they are tolerant for many different factors there will be for example bats you can find bats everywhere except arctic and antarctic different species but as a group of of, uh, of animals they they are uh, poly uh, eurivalent Ah, these are the examples of uh, what uh, species uh, can be dependent on their tolerance in the matter of type of uh, factor they're dependent on. So if they are strictly uh, dependent on a concentration of oxygen, it will be called stenooxybionts or eorioxybionts. So if they have really strict conditions that can live in for concentration of oxygen, it will be steno or the ones they, they tolerate different concentrations of oxygen in their surrounding would be eori oxybionts. For temperature be stenotherms or eoritherms, moisture is stenofigs or eurifigs, diet will be stenophags, eurifags, selenium will be stenohaline, eorihaline, and habitat will be stenotop and eoritop. Nice thing that, that follows this whole idea of adaptation is something that's called ecobiomorphs. Uh, what it means is that the, the shape of the body produced dependent on the area that animal or plant live in. The nice example for it are, are marine mammals and let's say fish. So they live in aquatic area, they're moving fast, so they need to be aquadynamic and that's what happened to their their, their body shape. That would be a nice example of ecobiomorph. Or birds and, and bats. They are using the same um, same niche, so same area to live and to eat and so on. So they have similar body shape, even though they have 
not much in common in any other um, area of physiology or or um, genetics and so on so only thing they have similar is ecology depending on that ecology you have a development of different organisms very could be very genetically far but they have similar eco requests and then you have it's called eco divergence or eco convergence eco divergence genetically uh, close species that look completely different depending on their surrounding so their their ecological factors for example let's say mammals so depending if you have a a dolphin or a monkey they are pretty close in genetics but they have completely different body shapes uh, that are adapted to the surrounding then you have convergence it means that genetically really far um, species have similar body shapes because they live in similar similar surrounding or just their ecology is similar example for it is a hummingbird and this specific moth uh, species so hummingbird lives in South America completely away from this arthropod it has nothing to do in genetic sense but they are both feeding on on a f uh, fruit nectar and and flower nectar so they have basically the same mouth aperture for for feeding and a similar movement of uh, wings uh, so these are would be example of, of the this is dipna the species they are really eori uh, oxybians uh, this would be the example tiger is um, uh, eori term it, they have a uh, tigers living in Russia in complete north and then you have a species of tigers living in India um, uh, this is, these are ca cardinals we talked about they are really temperature dependent so they're really stenotherms uh, they don't really um, appreciate the huge change in temperature you know this from all this talk about global warming and, and great barrier coral reef in Australia um, koala is really strict on diet, so it's ten of August. They only eat eucalyptus. Uh, then you have wolves. Wolves are uh, habit. Uh, they're cosmopolitans. You can find them basically everywhere in the world. And for the end of today's <coughs> lecture, real quick, t we're gonna talk about Liebig's law, or also known as the law of minimum. He was a German doctor and lived in the end of the uh, 18th century. He was the first one to notice that the most important and most limiting factor that will definitely define if a species is able to survive in a certain environment would be a certain condition or factor that the species has the lowest to tolerance for. What this means, a species can have different types of tolerance for different factors of its environment but the only one that species uh, has the, the the lowest tolerance for is the one that the species will be most sensitive to species can be eori or stenovalent for a lot different factors good explanation of this is this sentence written saying that organism is as strong as its weakest link in the ecological chain of needs so you could have high tolerance of variations for many different factors but if you are strictly connected to a specific one that will be one determining your environment an example for these are this uh, is humans and oxygen so you have people living on earth in many different environments eating different food uh, living in different ways on different climate but what's really common for everyone is surviving the needs for oxygen. So that's definite that all humans live in the oxygen rich environment. And that's the one that is definitely determining uh, like the first step of the choice of our environment would be the, the one with oxygen. Everything else is variable. Also this picture with the bucket is nicely 
explaining this main idea of Leibig's law of the minimum. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.